One of the most popular complications for frequent travelers is the world time. This busy yet useful complication offers an easy ability to track 24 different time zones around the globe with just a glance. However, the level of complexity involved in producing a world time caliber and just watch in general also tends to make the watches that include the complication to be rather expensive. But there are some more in reach than others examples out there on the market. In this video, I wanted to look at some of the more attainable in-house options for world timers with that functionality that fall in the price range around $4,000, $9,000. Frederic Constant world timer being one, the Nomus Zurich being the second, and the Omega Aquaterra world time being the third. I think all of these present some interesting propositions in the market for world times while all falling underneath the price of $9,000 and delivering some luxury types of feel for their segment. But let's jump into it. Now, before we jump into this video, we're only going to be looking at three world time watches here. So if you want a more dynamic list that has a wide array of different watches, different price segments, and understanding the world time even further, I would definitely recommend checking out our recent write-up looking at a ton of different world time watches that are available in the market. Could be a great jumping off point in addition to this video and helping you think about maybe adding a world timer to your collection. I'll have that in the description down below. So as a starting point, it is important to address that all the watches in this video have a different way of showcasing world time functionality. With a couple of these watches with the Omega and Nomos offering world time function by way of utilizing a GMT movement to allow the user to monitor all 24 time zones with just a glance. But believe it or not, the model with the most flexibility of setting as well as coming in with the lowest price is the FC World Timer. So let's go in ascending order. We'll break down each one of these watches and then discuss how you will set the time. And then at the end, just talk about some general pros and cons when you're looking at all of these watches. Now, starting at an impressive $4,000 or so, we have a relatively new offering from FC, a brand that has lived underneath the Citizen Watch Group since 2016, but has Swiss roots dating back to 1988. In the last decade, FC has become one of the major success stories in the world of developing manufacturer calibers, beginning with the FC 700 in 2009. However, one of the most impressive offerings has to be with the FC 718 in this world timer, as it offers one of the easiest world time settings I've come across with all the functions being operated with a single crown. Beginning with the FC on the wrist, we have a case that measures at 42 millimeters in diameter, 12.1 millimeters thick, and a 48.8 millimeter lug to lug. This set of dimensions is not small by any means, wearing similar to a 41 millimeter case, yet has a thickness that will slide underneath dress cuffs. The rounded case is polished on every visible surface, extending to the step bezel and lugs that contain the 22 millimeter alligator strap with contrasted stitching, complete with a well-executed and signed buckle. At three, a large push-pull onion-style crown rests in the usual position, pairing with the screw-down case back to secure this model's adequate 50 meters of water resistance. So beneath a dome sapphire crystal, we have a well-executed world-time dial display that presents in the traditional FC fashion. Starting at the outskirts, we have a rotating ring complete with 24 city names printed primarily in white over a dark blue background. Just within, the constantly rotating ring is broken into white and blue sections to represent the day and night hours and demarcated with legible 24 hour markings. At the center, the dial offers its biggest move with a three dimensional relief of a world map. Applied indices are also here, each with some luminescent material as well as polished silver handset and complete with loom as well. While the loom is nothing special, it does add some nighttime utility to an otherwise more dressy appearance. At noon, a raised brand word mark sits opposite of a prominent subsidiary date, which while visually interesting, does obfuscate the lower portion of the dial to some degree, theoretically reducing the world time capabilities if you needed to read a time zone in that displayed area. So flipping the watch over, we have an exhibition case back showcasing the previously mentioned FC 718. 
Now, although the finishing techniques are rather industrial, this watch sits in a range where the standard is an off-the-shelf Bosch caliber that are not always the easiest on the eyes. Now, the 718 exhibits unconventional architecture that distinguishes itself with a recessed outer channel around the central bridges to fit the larger weighted edge of that skeletonized rotor. The golden rotor features fine grain and raised written elements with machine perlage on the base plate and outer bridges, blued screws, and circular wave pattern at the movement's upper central bridge with lightly polished facets on the bridge edges. In addition, all the operation of this movement and the watch's function are conducted at the crown and without any additional pushers as is the case with many world time watches on the market. And compared to the other two watches in this video, which are both quite a bit more expensive, this watch features the truest execution of a world time watch that operates in a similar fashion compared to examples from high horology brands. In terms of the general specifications here for this movement, you have a 28,800 vibration per hour beat rate, four hertz, does feature hacking and hand winding, hacking stop in the second hand when you pull the crown to the farthest position, and does have a power reserve of 38 hours, so a little bit weak on that end. For setting of this world time, you first would begin by pulling the crown to the farthest position to set your local time in the proper point. Then from there, you would push the crown into the second position to change the setting of the proper date by rotating clockwise, and then setting the city disc with the local city at 12 o'clock by going counterclockwise. With this, you then will have the ability to track all the other time zones easily with all of this being done with that singular crown position, which I have to say is probably the easiest to set of all of these while still getting that independent function of the 24 hour scale as well as the cities. Now jumping up around $2,000 to our next price tier around 6,000, we have the Zurich World Time from Nomos. Now Nomos was officially registered in Glasuta, Germany in 1990, only two months after the fall of the Berlin Wall, with its first collection of watches debuting in 1992. In its early years, Nomos built watches using off-the-shelf Swiss calibers before later opting to bring movement production in-house in 2005, after third-party movement supply from ETA became insurmountable in its challenges. Despite many knowing the brand for their entry-level options from the likes of the Orion, the Tangente, the Ludwig, and the club models, the Zurich is one of the prime examples from Nomos's mix of creativity and stellar watchmaking with its use of the DOW 5201 on the inside. Now, beginning with the case, the Zurich comes in with a pleasing set of dimensions, including an almost 40 millimeter width paired with the slimmest 10.9 millimeter thickness of the bunch here. As is sometimes the case though with Nomos, the lug to lug is relatively long. The Zurich measuring here at 49.4 millimeters from this metric, making the watch wear closer to a 40 and a half to 41 millimeter case. So like the FC here, we have a polished case presentation spanning the slender bezel, vertical case flanks, faceted angular lugs, the crown, and pusher at two o'clock. The watch of the three leaves the most to be desired in the water resistance department with a rating of only 30 meters, but without question, this is the watch that feels the most dressy in comparison. Between the 20 millimeter lugs, the standard yet well done shell cordovan strap comes in with its glossy and reflective black sheen and breaks in wonderfully over time with a simply signed pin buckle on the other end. Taking a view of the watch's front facing surface, we have a dome sapphire crystal with anti-reflective coating, offering view of one of Nomos's most complicated dials, yet one that still upholds their restraint showcasing only what is necessary. It features a printed minute track at the outskirts with the rotating cities ring set well below the dial surface, just within the minute track. The central dial surface is executed in stark galvanized matte silvery white and signed at 12 with the brand word mark with the faceted rhodium plated hands shining in stark contrast over that surface below. At six, a small seconds register is tucked in relatively well, though it does extend out over the city track to a small extent similar to that FC with that subsidiary date. At three, the Zurich offers an interesting solution for tracking home time when on the go with a small home icon next to the additional rotating 24 hour ring. As is often the case with Nomos, the finishing on the dial is exceptional, but unlike many other dials from the brand, the Zurich offers unparalleled depth as a result of its added complexity while not being extravagant or ornamental, instead focused around clarity and utility. Turning the Zurich over, we have a well-decorated German-made caliber, the DUW5201, with a skeletonized rotor, glashuta waves across the central bridges, heat-tempered screw heads, and prolage across the main plate, 
This is an attractive caliber with unique architecture and features their proprietary swing system escapement, which is said to improve the efficiency of the escapement as a whole and was actually introduced alongside the release of this caliber. It's important to note that this caliber is essentially a GMT movement as opposed to a true world time movement, only tracking home time and one other time zone as opposed to simultaneously tracking the entire globe like the FC. But despite that difference, it is a well executed and a unique approach to tracking multiple time zones in a much clearer visual form format than you might get from many watches out there. To set this watch, you would first set your home time by pulling the crown to that position to adjust that appropriate uh, three o'clock displayed home time next to that indicator. From there, you can then advance with the pusher that advances the city ring. It does engage in a snappy manner to that next resting point. And then once you have the proper time at the 12 o'clock with that time zone, you can adjust the local hour hand independently with the help of the eight o'clock pusher on the side of the case. This is definitely the most complicated of the three here, but still interesting in how they're able to pull it off. In terms of general specifications, 28,800 vibrations per hour, four hertz for the movement, hacking and hand winding, and a slightly better power reserve of 42 hours compared to that of the FC. Now moving up to our final price here, just north of $9,000 on the bracelet, we have the Omega Aquaterra World Timer, a more complicated take on Omega's excellent and versatile Aquaterra collection, and by a large margin, the sportiest option that we have here today. So the Aquaterra collection, although being relatively new by Omega collection standards, was launched back officially in 2002. Since it's launched 20 years ago, the AT has expanded to include a dozens of just variations in terms of size, dial color, bracelet, strap options, case material, and of course, a myriad of movements and complications, including this attractive world timer that was originally unveiled as a platinum limited edition in 2017 before the stainless steel variant dropped in 2019. On the wrist, the Aquaterra World Timer comes in with a 43 millimeter diameter paired with a somewhat restrained, almost 50 millimeter lug to lug. And despite being 43 millimeters, I would say it works closer to that of a 42 millimeter watch by most standards when you factor that in. However, one thing that needs to be factored in is that this watch is going to be the thickest of the bunch coming in just under 14 millimeters thick. So it's certainly going to sit the highest on the wrist of this trio. Often a leader in terms of finishing for the price, this AT World Timer offers linear brushing with smaller hits of polishing to add visual interest throughout. Set between 20 millimeter lugs, this AT is equipped with a three link style bracelet utilizing brushed outer links and a polished center link, an execution that is likely to broadcast its wear given the propensity to show scratches on that center link, but a design trait really commonly associated with the Aquaterra family at this point. Tapering to 18 millimeters, the bracelet culminates with a hidden butterfly style push button clasp that operates smoothly while unfortunately lacking any traditional points of micro adjustment in the process. In keeping with the big price jump here, the finishing on the case and bracelet is more involved compared to the others, and the dial presents much more of the same, if not exceptionally more. Looking at the watch's anterior surface, we have a slightly domed sapphire crystal treated with anti-reflective coating on both sides, offering an uninterrupted view regardless of the angle of the center dial plate, coming in grade five titanium that has been laser ablated to create a realistic three-dimensional globe as well as the Seamaster signature. Just outside the globe, a 24 hour ring made of hazelite, so nice cool hidden detail there, rests below the sunbrush blue primary dial surface and is split to show the day and nighttime hours. Although the city's printed along and between the faceted applied indices on the outside are fixed to the dial, the cool feature here is that the realistic globe at the center helps with the orientation and finding the proper city in a much more geographically pleasing manner as the city will line up in its general location on the globe at the center. A standard Aquaterra style handset manages the time telling duties with a date window neatly tucked into the six o'clock position and capable loom is present on the indices and hands, though it does not glow to the most impressive degree compared to some other offerings from the brand and as well as the Master collection. Now turning the watch over, we have a screw down exhibition case back that combines the aforementioned screw down crown and achieving the 150 meters of water resistance here. So by far the best of this trio. Inside we have the in-house caliber, the 8938, which is a well-finished just movement for the price, though it's not leaps ahead of others in the finishing department. It showcases an array of spiral waves on the rotor and other movement components and machine engraved text. 
The 8938 is also equipped with 39 joules, a silicon balance spring, beats at Omega's coaxial escapement frequency of 25,200 vibrations per hour, or 3.5 hertz, and comes in with a Meta certification. This comes with a tight range of accepted daily deviation from accuracy standards, as well as a variety of other just temperature, shock, magnetic tests, all while having the movement be fully cased up. Just to speak to how to operate and set this watch, this follows the same activation as other AT models as the first position will enable the isolated adjustment of the local hour hand without stopping the balance wheel. However, unlike other world timers, which most often features an ability to rotate that ring of locations representing those 24 time zones, as well as another 24 hour ring with a day night indicator, this caliber only provides the ladder functionality that is also tied to the general minute hand for setting. So like the Nomos, this is more of a GMT caliber adopted with world time duties, but the setting is rather simple. First, you would pull the crown to the farthest position to set the proper time and align that 24 hour ring properly. And from there, you could just push the crown in to adjust that second position to easily adjust that central hour hand bi-directionally without stopping the balance wheel in the process. So much easier than the Nomos, despite it falling more in alignment with that type of operation and the movement. So in terms of general operation, we have 25,200 vibrations per hour, 3.5 Hertz. It does feature hacking and hand winding in the best power reserve of this trio for 60 hours. So now with the general just breakdown of these watches out of the way, let's talk more about the pros and cons associated with all of these watches. And if you're somebody looking for that world time watch, what should you consider when looking in the direction? I think all of these are leaders in the price segment that they occupy when it comes to world timer functionality. These are complications that can start to really extend to a high price range, but I think under $10,000, these are some of the ones that quickly come to mind. First, beginning with the FC World Timer, I think the number one thing working against this watch is just the general branding. I think FC is maybe not as highly regarded as, of course, an Omega, but even a Nomos. I think from an independent watchmaking perspective, Nomos has really been able to carve out a nice reputation and having a very unique design identity. FC does struggle sometimes pulling from other brands. Uh, when you talk about high horology brands and emulating the same looks at a more attainable price, I think that for some could be a plus, but for others that might diminish uh, maybe spending $4,000 on a brand like FC, despite there being a lot going for it when it comes to the functionality of the world time. Finishing of the three, probably going to be leaving the most to be desired. Uh, not crazy behind on the dial compared to the Nomos. I think the movement is also somewhat in the same ballpark uh, and pretty well done for a $4,000 watch. But comparing that globe here, uh, at the center compared to that of the Aquaterra, it's not even the same sphere, but we also are talking about a watch that's double the price at the end of the day. So kind of have to keep all that in context. But on the flip side, I think if you're just trying to get into the world of world time complications, true world timers have an easy ability to set the watch with a single crown position, this is going to give you the most complete ability to execute this at a most attainable price possible. Next to some of the flyback chronographs that FC is doing, this is probably one of the more intriguing offerings from the brand, just because if you look at the competition, what other world timers are there that are going to be out in the market for sub $5,000 that are going to give you this ease and uh, of complexity when it comes to setting that time with a single crown? That is very well done. You don't even have additional pushers. It's very intuitive on how to set this watch and just navigate it. I think that's the main reason why you're kind of dealing with more price and trying to get into this complication in the most true way on the tightest budget. Now transitioning over to the Nomos Zurich. Speaking to some cons here, this is a GMT movement at the end of the day. And although they've exercised a lot of creativity to make some world time functions, this is by far the most complicated watch to set if you are on the go. It's going to create extra challenges with the pusher, also that one that needs a tool on the side of the case, or at least is harder to just fingertip at. You have to you know, actually put some more effort into it with that isolated local hour hand. This could be a deal breaker for some. And then looking at water resistance, although this is Nomos and they most commonly are associated with dress watches, having 30 meters of water resistance might just simply not be enough for people out there. But now looking at the pro side of this watch, the reason why I wanted to include this watch and why I really do like the Zurich World Time is this is the Nomos watch that I think is the best way to perhaps get somebody to look at the brand Nomos in a different light compared to maybe some of their entry level models. This is not your conventional Nomos for a variety of reasons. One is going to be, of course, uh, the movement with the DUW on the inside, but also more importantly, 
the way that they're able to display the complexity of the dial in a very clean manner that's still in line with their brand, this is just a cool aesthetic. It's balanced, it's well finished, nice movement on the inside. The dial display is unique and it still remains very much Nomos and falls in a price range around $6,000, yes, it is a significant jump up from the FC. But even then, when looking at the competition for around this price segment, still not much else out there when it comes to world time functionality done to this level. And now for the Omega Aquaterra world time, for some cons here, I think the first thing has to be, it's an expensive watch compared to the competition and even expensive for the Aquaterra family. I think many people, when they think of the Aquaterra, they think of that entry level model. So when they see a $9,000 price tag on this, some people might just be like, oh, I'm just gonna write that off, can't really do it. Also going to be the largest of the bunch in terms of just case diameter and thickest of the bunch. So that could potentially put some people off and it's not a true world timer uh, to the most pure degree with the fixed cities on the outside. That considered, when you're talking about the upside of this watch, I think this is one of the more interesting Omega watches that's maybe not talked about as much, maybe more interesting underrated watches from Omega under $10,000, incredibly well finished. That realistic looking globe at the center is just stunning underneath the macro lens as well as just seeing it in person. It just is so striking and well done. Omega just nailed that. You have the best water resistance on the bunch. I think this could be the one and done style watch. When I interviewed Reynold Eshelman, CEO of Omega, he was wearing this watch with a suit. It didn't look out of place. I could just see this being that traveling businessman watch that you could just grab anytime and it would not look out of place. And although the finishing across the board, I would say is more substantial, even where the movement might not be leaps ahead of the competition for these three here, it still is going to get some other specifications to go along with it with that 60 hour power reserve and that Metas certification with nice, just fine tuned accuracy as well. But all right guys, that is my video looking at these three fantastic world time watches in the price segment of under $10,000. Of these three, which one would you pick? What do you think has the best presentation of value and makes the most sense for a variety of people out there? Love to see those comments. And is there another watch that you would consider in this similar light alongside these three watches that somebody else should also consider? Also be sure to check out that World Timer blog down below if you want even further information on World Timers, different watches out there, pretty in-depth analysis of different watches that are on the market that you can check out. Also be sure to check out teddybaldasar.com, full authorized dealer of 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, and a full factory warranty for all the products that we offer. But all right guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I'll see you all very soon.